of the Episcopal Church or the Anglican Church and someone wants to know, what do you believe? What does the church stand for? You can point them to the catechism, which is the outline of our faith. It's the, it's the base from which we start after baptism. And so on this particular page, um, we have the question of God the Father. They're answering this subject. God the Father. Who is God the Father? And in terms of God the Father, we know that what, well, ask the question. So I'm going to ask the question. This is not, it's not a trick question. It's an easy question. And I believe the answer is even in the books. Yeah. You know why I say that? Because when I was in Catholic school, I will never forget that my friend, we had an open book test. Or, well, it wasn't supposed to be. Let's be realistic. It wasn't supposed to be open book. But my wise friends and I decided that we weren't going to memorize all of these things because in the Catholic Church, some of those catechism questions are super long, and we were supposed to memorize them. So what we did was someone opened the book while the teacher wasn't looking. <laughs> you know what it is, right? And so I laughed because one of my friends failed the test. And I was like, I can't understand how you failed the test when all of us had an open book test in terms of all you have to do is copy it word for word, right? And, our, and the, the particular, God rest her soul, Sister Eleanor, she, she was a stickler. If you missed a, a comma, you were getting points off because you had to memorize it complete. And, and we couldn't understand. I'm like, you copied it directly from the book. We all did. How did you fail? So the answers are in the book. And the first question under the God the Father section is, what do we learn about God as creator from the revelation to Israel? Now, what does that mean? You guys, hold on, hold on, hold on. I remember I said, there's no trick questions. <laughs> it's in the book. All you have to do is read it. So let's start this over again. There's, there's some up there, but let's give you, who doesn't have one? 846. We're on page 846. Okay, let's try this question. What does it mean? What does this mean about our place in the universe? It means that the world belongs to its creator and that we are called to enjoy it and to care for it in accordance with God's purpose. Okay, then what does this mean about human life? It means that all people are worthy of respect and honor because all are created in the image of God and all can respond to the love of God. And how was this revelation handed down to us? This revelation was handed down to us through our community created by our God and our All right. So when we say we believe in God the Father and we want to know who God the Father is, we just have to turn to page 846 in the Catechism to have a beginning point or a continuation of who is this God the Father. And what we learn from this, this our Catechism is that we are um, the God the Father is the Father who created the earth and all that is in it. But most important, he created the universe, which is good, right? And because he created a universe which is good, we are called to take care of this universe. And, and it goes on further, and it says, well, what does that mean about human life? It means that all people are worthy of respect and honor because all are created in the image of God and all can respond to the love of God. Right? Here lies the challenge. We live in a world that has been created good. Right? And, and, and God has given this to the creation 
some animals and some trees and some plants and some other things, but he also created us as human beings, and we were created not just good, but very, very good. Right? We have two varies in there. And, and, and so we live in a world where, it was, we, where the world was created good, and the humans that are in it were created very good, very, very good, and yet when we wake up in the morning, and we turn our TV on, we will be confused at what the gospel and what our catechism is saying. Because we wake up and we hear the news and, and, and we listen and, and you just think, what is wrong with the world today? And, and the reality is that there's actually nothing wrong with the world that, the, of today because God created it and God created it very good. It is we, his creation, that he created very, very good, that is messing up the world, right? You can't blame the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom's not doing anything, right? It's we, the ones that were the inheritors of this world that are creating the problems that we see in the world about us. In the gospel this morning, Jesus paints a picture of a landowner who did everything needed to get the land ready and gave it to the tenants. And all the tenants had to do was at the end of the season, give the landowner what was his. Right? That was all they needed to do. Give the landowner what was his. And the land of um, the tenants thought in themselves, well, why should I? Right? I want to keep all of it for me. And, and they, every time he sent the slaves, they killed them, they beat them, they did whatever. And finally, somewhere in their minds, I don't even understand their minds and their thinking, they said, well, if we kill the son, then we will inherit all of this. Now, you didn't kill the father, so you're not going to inherit anything. And Jesus asked the question, what should the father do? Or what should the landowner do when he gets there? And, and they, of course, they write and say, oh, they should kill all of them and just get new tenants. And then Jesus continues to preach about the stone, the cornerstone that the builders rejected, right? And then all of a sudden, it dawns on them. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus is talking about us, us uh, Sadducees and Pharisees. He's talking about us. And they didn't like it so much. They didn't like hearing what Jesus had to say about them as he challenged them on the way in which they were treating the creation that God had given them. And creation doesn't just mean the animal kingdom, the plants and all of it. Creation means us too. And how they were treating the outcasts, the prostitutes, the, the sick, the, the tax collector, just their fellow brethren. How they were treating them was not with this respect for which God had intended us to be with one another, being in relationship with one another. If the universe is created by God and God created the universe good, then our only response to it is to treat it in kind. Our only response is to treat not only the animals, not only the trees and the universe and the environment well, but it's called to treat our brothers and sisters with the same love and respect that God has given to us, correct? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, you're not asking too confident, I'm a little afraid. Right, this week we celebrated St. Francis and everybody knew that, uh, you know, we all know that St. Francis was a lover of animals and you know, we do the blessing of the animals. We don't do it here yet. Maybe we'll do it next year, you never know. Maybe Milo will show up and everybody will love you. Milo's my dog, if you haven't seen me walk at him over there. Right? I know not everybody likes animals, but they are a part of this world. And we love them. Sometimes we love them more than we love the two-legged animals walking this earth. Right? Is, am I lying? Yes. We have more rules in this country to protect animals than sometimes I wonder. Right? And they are lovable. Pets are lovable, especially cats and dogs, because they just well, not so much cats. I had cats. They're lovable, but they're lovable in a different way. But dogs are just lovable because no matter what, as an owner, they come back and they just are so excited to see you. 
And it, it is kind of like that's what God wants for us when we see each other, to be excited over the fact that, wow, I haven't seen you over a week from last Sunday, and I'm just so happy to be around you. But that's not necessarily how we do, right? Some of us are, uh oh, I gotta go because so and so just walked through the door. <laughs> right? We're all guilty of that. We're all guilty of trying to run from somebody or avoid somebody, right? Because if we, we, whatever we think about them or whatever is going on between them, we just don't want to see them. And so, if our response to, to do you believe in God the Father is to say, yes, we believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, our response is not to run away from our brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. but toward them and embrace them with love. Amen. But when you wake up on a Monday morning and you hear that 58 people plus <laughs> have gotten shot, killed, or injured, it's hard to really embrace that, is it not? Yes. It's really hard to embrace it. But if we, if we go back to the catechism and it says, what does that mean about human life? And we just read it means that all people are worthy of respect and honor because all are created in the image of God. What do we have to say about the shooter? Right? This is where our faith really challenges us. When people do acts of evil, it's hard to see the goodness of God in them, right? It's hard to see, well, why did this guy just go out and start shooting complete innocent strangers that he didn't know? What caused that? The problem is not necessarily in the guns, even though we do need gun control, right? We, I, I listen, people over in the internet sphere, Mother Ellis doesn't say that you can't own a gun. Mother Ellis just simply says, let's have some laws that make sense. Okay, that's what Mother Ellis says. I don't know why you need one, but if you're gonna own it, let us have laws that make sense. But the problem isn't in the gun owner. I mean, are the gun controls, it's in the owner and the people around it. Because if we are truly treating people, seeing the goodness in them, when they have mental illness problems, we will not be running away. We will not put them in a corner and say, oh, they'll, you know, that person is special. We all have the special members in our family, right? Mm -hmm. Don't act like Mother Ellis is the only one that has special members in the family. <laughs> you might actually be the special member in your family, <laughs> and you just don't know it, okay? Right? But we cannot treat mental illness or people who have problems by saying, oh, they're special, or, or, or get over it. Right? You don't get over things. You get through them. Yes. Right? And so somewhere along the line, the communications with this man, people just started to ignore what was going on. Or maybe that people just didn't ask, are you OK? How's life? What's going on? Where is your hurt this day? See, if we are to treat people as if they were created good, as if they were created in the image of God, we will reach out to them even if they're different. Even if what they're doing makes absolutely no sense. We will be able to love them and care for them as they are. To guide and direct and say, you know, you don't really want to do that. Or to even pick up the phone and say, I'm concerned about this person over here. Can you go check? Right? When we start to actually act um, in the manner in which God created us as good and be good towards others, I believe that the world would be a much different place. I believe that we would live more into the fact that God created this universe good. And that there are challenges in this world, but we don't have to be at odds and fight with each other. That there is a middle ground of understanding that this is where you stand, this is where I stand, but we are all children of God, Amen. right? Because if we don't do that, what are we sitting here for? What is the point of it? We might as well worship God in our own house and just say, well, I have a relationship with God, and that's all that matters. But that's not what we're called to do. We're called to be in relationship with one another. 
and to treat not only the people in this world, but the whole of creation good and respectable and kind. We can't make sense of what happened on Monday. Right? We, would, we would just lose our mind trying to make sense because the person who did it isn't here anymore. And we can't get into that person's mind because what we were supposed to get into the mind was way before the event happened. But we can learn from this event and learn to reach out to the other. Learn to connect with the other and that it's not as scary as it may be. Because at the end of the day, all of us want the same thing. You know what that is? To be loved. Because we were not created in isolation. If we read the second, the second um, creation story, it's, God says it's not good for man to be alone and created a mate. Because we were created to be in relationship with one another. So at our very core, we want to be loved and cared for. Now, if you've ever journeyed with somebody with mental illness or any of those sorts, you know it's not easy, because they can be difficult, right? But sometimes people who don't have mental illness can be difficult, Amen. right? Amen. And then we start to wonder, are you sure? Is you gonna get a diagnosis? But I think we're all a little bit on the crazy side, right? We all have a little bit of something in us. I know I do, I know I can be a little, nutty when I want to be. All right. <laughs> it happens, right? But if we just would treat each other the way in which our catechism teaches us, the way in which our faith calls us to be because it's the only response to God's creation and treating each other good and lovable, this world would be different and we would wake up happy. You know there was a time though in, in, in the media when we woke up happy, right? Because they just had good things on, right? They had decent things on. You know, the Leave it to Beaver people. It may not have represented us in a sense of color, but it represented us in a sense of human decency. It represented us in a time of this is how we one should react and be kind and have proper manners, young men or young women. Proper manners as grown adults to one another. But nowadays, we see anything goes on TV. And even in the, new, in the news, all they want to report on is who's been stabbed, shot, how many people got robbed, who was arrested this day, and what is OJ Simpson doing after his jail sentence? As if it matters, right? How does this make it good for the good of the people? How is showing us the negative side, which we all know exists in us, right? We all have that bad angel on our shoulder. But if we only nurtured that side, that's all we're gonna get. So there's a good in us. There's more good in us as a, a human society than there is bad. And if we were to just highlight those moments, if we were just to focus on the good news, the world wouldn't be the way it is. Some people are saying, okay, it's the end of the world. <laughs> okay, so it's the end of the world. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Right? Are you going to just wallow in and just say all is lost? Or are you going to still respond to God's call to do good and be good and treat each other good? Because the vineyard experience is real. We are the Pharisees and Sadducees. We are the tenants that are killing the people of God. God calls us to use our gifts and our talents and everything that he has given us and blessed us with. He gave us this earth, tilled it, and said, here, all is yours. All you have to do is care for it and give me what is mine. And if we lived and did what that was, we would not have to worry. We wouldn't even have to lock our doors at night. You remember that time when you didn't lock the doors, right? We know how to live that way, and we can return that way, because we are called to do so as Christians. We are to be the moral compass as Christians, if they won't show it on TV, and the way in which we act and behave in our day-to-day -day life. Treating each other with dignity and respect and kindness, even when we don't agree. Oftentimes, my friends or people will say, how do you get along with difficult people? I say, they're no difficult people. They're just people needing love. 
right? That, the, that God created them good, and you just have to find the goodness in them and bring it out and nurture that. Now, of course, you got to hold people accountable for their actions because God held the Israelites accountable for their actions, right? Every single grumbling, he, he did provide them with the food they wanted. He did provide them with the water that they needed. But he also provided them with the commandments. Now, here's what's going to happen. Because you can't follow and just follow and obey and just do certain things out of just the way in which you were created, here are the rules that you need to follow. This covenant that I'm calling you to accountability for and that you will suffer in your actions if you go against it. Right? There's different types of death. There is the death where, yes, your heart stops beating, right? And you're no longer alive. But there are spiritual deaths, <coughs> emotional deaths, friendships that have broken, or relationships that have died. There are many types of deaths that go on in our world. And we suffer those deaths because of the consequences of our actions. But we don't have to suffer forever. We don't have to suffer long. We can get up and acknowledge and repent and return to the Lord as our baptismal covenant calls us to do. And we can reach out and make bridges across the divide and say, I am sorry, or let's talk about it. We, don't, we're, we recognize that we're not going to end up on the same page, but we can end up in the same book of life and journey together without making it complicated, without wishing that person ill harm without trying to kill them in your mind. Yeah, some of you are laughing. You know what I'm talking about. Right? There's many deaths that happen in our minds. But the only way to get there is to recognize the goodness in yourself. That God created you good. And if you can live from your goodness, if you can live on that good side of you, then you can recognize the good in someone else. Even if you have to just start with, oh, that person has nice hair. <laughs> or that person doesn't have any hair, but still looks nice with the bald hair. <laughs> right? Start somewhere and find good in them and work it. I'm sorry, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> Right? <laughs> just start somewhere to build that bridge. And then we will be able to say, yes, I do believe in God the Father who created this universe good and everything in it is therefore good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Greetings, brothers and sisters. I thank you for watching and being a part of the St. Joseph's Faith Community today. St. Joseph's is a loving community dedicated to serving God's people out in the world. We are a church not, not only practices to read scripture, but to live scripture out in our daily lives. I invite you to join us at the 8 a.m. service or the 11 a.m. service on Sundays. We also have Sunday school for both our young people and our adults at 10 a.m. on Sundays. On Wednesday, we have our senior service, which begins at 1030, followed by senior programs, which produces a variety of Bible study or movies that we discuss, um, which are important in our lives. On our fifth Sundays of the month, we have our youth service, and we are inviting all of you to join and partake on that service, which takes place at 930 a.m. St. Joseph's is moving out into the world and becoming a part of the community which surrounds us. And one of my favorite texts in scripture is Romans chapter 5, where Paul reminds us about all of our suffering and the endurance that it produces, and that endurance produces character, and character produces hope, which is in God, who never lets us down. And I'm reminded often on that passage that our hope, as long as it's placed in the right spot, which is God, will never let us down and never disappoint us. St. Joseph's is a place where 
you can come and bring your all to God and leave it on the altar. You can come and be who you are and be loved for who you are. And so I invite you to join our faith community as we go forward to live our life in our individual communities, hoping to bring joy to all whom we encounter. Please have a blessed day.